Hey everyone, thanks for joining us this morning. My name's Ian, I'm one of the elders at Hope Church Seven Oaks. We, along with my friend Adam, we're doing something slightly differently this morning. I'm in a different location. I'm back in the church building um, just for this week. Um, we won't be going from our Luke series today. We're gonna to be looking at a video of what God is doing amongst us and uh, also what people have been doing in this time. I hope you enjoy it. Uh, I'll be in there and Adam's in there as well, just doing a few interviews and I will see you on the other side to share some thoughts. Hi everyone, hope you're all doing well. Ian has asked me just to share with you what's been going on this past week in our house. Um, last Tuesday we started asking the community for some material sheets, duvet cover, anything they could spare because we were starting to sew some isolation gowns for the NHS. There is a group on Facebook called Sewing for the NHS and they requested as many isolation gowns as possible. So we started collecting material, I started cutting out patterns, delivering them to different ladies who started sewing because I can't do any sewing. Rachel Northcroft was one of them who did some brilliant gowns for us. Last week, Wednesday, Thursday, we delivered about 20 gowns. On Friday, another 30, 35. And the plan is on coming Tuesday to deliver another 40 to 50 gowns. So I think in total, our group of 15, 16 ladies made over 100 gowns. You will see some pictures of the gowns. There was lovely patterns and some Winnie the Pooh ones that I think the doctors will all fight over. Um, we also had our own courier, material courier, John. My son was on his bicycle every day for the past week cycling from Kemsing, Otford, Chipstead, Seven Oaks, um, delivering material, picking up finished gowns and just he was just all over the place. So it was really great to be involved in that. And yeah, if you're in looking in your area to do something for the NHS, I'm sure there's a project going wherever you are. Okay, God bless you all. Thank you. Okay, hi Jane. Well it's great to see you. Um, you were just telling me earlier about uh, um, an amazing story that God has uh, uh, really um, come and affected you. Can you just tell us about what's happened? Yeah, sure. Um, I had um, a sciatic nerve problem um, a, well, a year or so ago when Terry Virgo came and he um, healed it completely and utterly. And over the last few days, it's been incredibly painful again um, to the point that last night I phoned my daughter who's an osteopath and said, you're going to have to do something. What can I do? Give me some exercises, help me. So she tried, but I just, I tried to do some, I got stuck on the floor. Basically I was in agony. So I crawled into bed, took some cocodamol and just lay there. And normally if I'm lying still, you know, things improve. They didn't, it was absolutely awful. And I suddenly, well, remembered if you like what Terry had done. And I said, Lord, you've healed me. You healed me. Why am I having to go through this again? Um, and I, I thought nothing more. And then I started saying, you know, pain, leave me. I must be healed. I am a child of God and all this. And I lay there and about 1.30, I must have gone to sleep. I, and eventually the pain must have been released a bit. Um, when I woke up a couple of hours later, it was completely gone. Absolutely completely wow. gone. And I, I kept trying to move. It was one of those pains that whatever you moved, it hurt because it was right into my back. Um, and it, was, it had gone. I mean, today it just feels as if I've been hit by a car, but it's, it's, the pain isn't there. And so you're pain-free and you were pain-free kind of when you woke up from your sleep? Yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah, after having a really, really horrendous night to begin with. But uh, it's like standing on the promise of God that, mm -hmm. you know, I had. And... I, I don't know, I've forgotten. I felt God was sort of saying, you've got this power in you, use it. You know, it's it's something you, I've given to you. Now stand on it. Um, and I know it in my head, but I guess I had to sort of really have the faith. And I, I just believe that that's what he's doing at the moment. He's just encouraging us to use the, the faith he's already and the healing he's already and the gifts he's already given to us and just to practice them at this time. That's really encouraging. It's also really encouraging because at the last uh, church prayer meeting, we prayed specifically there'd be a fresh release of power and healing yeah. uh, as part of it. So that is such an encouraging story, Jane. And I'm delighted that you're out of pain as well. OK. Hi, everyone. Um, just wanted to introduce you to uh, my friend Rich. Rich recently did Alpha. Hi, Rich. Nice to see you again. Hi, and cheers. 
Uh, Rich, I wonder if you could just tell us a little bit about yourself and we're going to just talk about your experience on Alpha. So, uh, Rich, tell us um, about your background and a bit about yourself. Sure, yeah. So, um, yeah, my name is Rich, um, live in Seven Oaks, and I've, I currently work or have been working in the city for a number of years in finance. Um, uh, I've got a family, I've got two young kids um, and a dog. So it uh, keeps me busy, but I also do a lot of um, triathlon kind of sport. Um, so a lot of cycling, a lot of running, uh, especially. Um, so I'm fairly busy. Um, but yeah, found my way to, to Alpha after my wife, um, Annabelle, uh, did it last year. Okay, great. Um, so you didn't have any sort of Christian background at all? or That's right. So my... My dad, I guess I was brought up in, in maybe a, what you'd call a spiritual household rather than a Christian one. Um, so, yeah, I've always been um, kind of exposed to the, the spirituality side, but less so of, the, of, of Christianity per se. Mm. Um, but I've certainly read around um, the subject, if you like, for many years. Okay. And then about a year or so, a year, 18 months ago, you first came to Hope Church for a a child's um, Thanksgiving and um, what was that like that experience for you yeah that was um, that was amazing actually that kind of caught me by surprise um, we we went for a friend's um, like you say a, it was a child's um, sort of giving thanks or, or a sort of protection over the child um, forgotten what you call it actually but it was it was just, sort of strangely moving and emotionally um, sort of charged. Um, and both me and my wife and actually a friend we were there with as well, all kind of felt really quite emotional um, from that. So, yeah, that kind of hinted that maybe there was something, uh, there was something in all this. Hmm. Yeah, so you started to have more questions. You say Annabelle, your wife, came on Alpha. So I got to know her as well, which was great. Um, and then you decided to come, you started to come to Alpha this, this year in January. So how did you find that? Yeah, it was great. I mean, everyone was like, it was, they were so welcoming. Um, no kind of judgment, um, people from all different backgrounds and, and different starting points, I think, uh, interestingly. So some that were, were a lot further down the road uh, than I was, um, and maybe some that had only literally taken their first step on that road. So all different backgrounds, um, but everyone made to feel very welcome. Um, and yeah, it was a, it was a really, really great experience. I mean, we did about four, four or five weeks at the church um, meeting physically. And then the rest we had to obviously do on zoom mm. because of the, uh, the lockdown situation that we find ourselves in. Yeah. Yeah, so what were your kind of thoughts or views of Jesus before um, we, you did Alpha and how has that changed since? Yeah, so I've, that's, it's an interesting one. I mean, I've, I've come from a, the background of believing that, I guess, Jesus was a, an incredible spiritual teacher, um, and, but not necessarily God as a person um i've now i have i have changed my view slightly on that and now i do i'm i'm definitely more open-minded on that now um regardless i still you know completely uh completely in awe of of his teaching um and and so i've, I've definitely become more open-minded on that question i think okay we i, I think that probably the last time we were all together in person was the alpha holy spirit day wasn't it um can you remember that and um what what was that like yeah i i did really enjoy that i mean some people i think go into that day perhaps thinking they're going to kind of receive this lightning bolt moment or yeah. you know real strong powerful awakening i i didn't get that so much but mine was more i just felt a real sense of peace um and and that's great because in a way that's that's kind of what I want I want that kind of sense of calmness and, and peace um like I say I'm normally quite a busy person and not much time to to kind of think about these big questions so 
that's great if i if i can find peace through this then then that's great yeah great um and you you kind of describe yourself as on a bit of a journey now um how has that helped you in the current situation with the kind of turmoil that's going on really in in the world and in work and and everything yeah i think that's the timing of this is so on one hand it's it's been a shame in some ways because we couldn't meet physically every week but on the other hand the timing has been absolutely brilliant and and maybe it feels on a personal level maybe god's got some part to play there but you know we're now i'm now able to kind of get a lot more perspective on this crisis and not have perhaps such anxiety and worry um feeling like you know god is there and is mm. in control of this situation somehow or another i mean we don't we don't have the answers and exactly how that works yeah. but but it does give me a sense of of calm um and yeah a lot more i guess a lot less anxiety on that front wow that's good yeah I th- well, it's been a real pleasure to get to know you over the weeks that we've done Alpha. And I think, you know, definitely on a journey and God has got a plan for you. And it's just really exciting to have been a part of that. Um, would you recommend Alpha to other people? I definitely would. I mean, if you've got those kind of big questions uh, that, that you just don't have time or space to think about, I think Alpha is perfect. I mean, it just gives you that opportunity every week to just think about these big questions, to explore Christianity and and, and find and explore whether that has got the answers that you're potentially looking for. Um, so, yeah, and I definitely would recommend it, yeah. Great. Well, thanks for your time, uh, Rich. It's been great to get to know you. I'm sure we'll see a lot more of you and hopefully we'll get to see you in person again when we're all allowed out again. Um, but thanks very much. Thank you very much. Uh, As some of you might know, a couple of weeks ago, I was really ill. Um, I uh, was actually in bed at one stage for five, six days. I think it was day six. Um, I think Angie started worrying. She she came up that afternoon and she she said she needs to pray for me. And that that doesn't happen that often, by the way. But she did. She laid hands on me and she prayed. And she prayed that God step in. She prayed that he destroy the virus in me and uh, that my temperature breaks because I I think at that stage was sort of day six, seven uh, of um, the temperature that was in me. But I can testify that on that very same day, later that night, the temperature broke and it didn't come back since then. It took me a little while just to recover the chest and the coughing and stuff. Hey, but God is good, let me tell you. And uh, uh, that's why we praise him. You know, he loves us so much. And uh, he, he destroyed that virus. And it was immediate healing that happened. Um, we've also got a great story about Jaden. She made a decision to follow Jesus. And she'll tell you more about that right now. Have a good one. Hi, I'm Angie. And this is Jaden. So we have three girls in our house. Um, we have me, which is the oldest. And then Jaden is our oldest daughter. So Jaden, while we've been in lockdown, how's it been in lockdown? Quite difficult? Yes. Yes. But while we have been in lockdown, you have made a really, really big decision. So what is the big decision you've made? Follow Jesus. So you fo- you've, you've decided to follow Jesus. And that's amazing. We are so happy. So when, can you tell me when you started thinking about it, about this? I started thinking thinking about it after, like, and in Ashburn, and, and then when we started watching Connect HQ, always at the end of their videos, they do the ABCs, which are Admit, Believe, and Choose, and that's when I also started thinking, so. Okay, so what is, um, what is Connect HQ? It's like a kind of a community that does YouTube videos and it says stories about God to teach you things. Yeah, so where did you see it? In kids' church. So wow, Jaden, congratulations. That's such an amazing decision. And how did you, so what happened on the night that you made the decision? Who? Um, because I, I, 
because um, I sometimes feel like scared in my bed and literally I don't really that much anymore. But when um, that night I did not feel scared at all. Wow, and Daddy, your, when Daddy took you through the prayer pray, um, to make a decision, didn't you? Yeah. Well, that's Jaden's story. So see you all soon. Bye bye. So I hope you found that encouraging today, hearing just some of what is happening at the moment and what God is doing in these times. Uh, what we've watched today is just a small insight into what God is doing. I, I've heard just this week of two separate cases of people who were on the brink of death with COVID-19, having do not resuscitate on their beds if things were to take a, a worse turn, organs failing, but people have been praying for what seemed like the impossible. But those people are still here. And some were breathing without aid and potentially now coming out of the other side, but we still need to be praying for God's intervention. I was really encouraged to hear these stories this week. On a lot smaller level, uh, we as a family have been knowing God. We've been having some good days and bad with homeschooling and stuff like that. But as a family, we've been praying for people and for families and for friends, talking about God together. Um, we had a few days where we talked about the Holy Spirit and how God speaks to us. And we had a time where actually we'd lost something. One of the kids had lost something. They were very upset about it. And we prayed and asked God to show us where this item was. And then about a minute later, one of the kids came to me and said, I think it's in this bag that grandma bought us. So I was a bit sceptical, but we went and found the bag. And sure enough, in that bag was the item that we lost. Then we had this great conversation about the Holy Spirit and God speaking to us and spiritual gifts. We asked God to show us and there it was. And this morning, I just want to encourage you that God is with you. And this, and you're still moving. Even if you are finding this situation difficult, if you are wanting and craving your old life back, you can know him and draw even closer to him in this time. And for a few minutes, I just want to look at some verses that I hope will encourage you in this time. The verses I want to look at are some, some favourites of mine. And I think they can help us. And the first one is Philippians 4, 11 to 13. It says this, for I have learned in whatever situation I am to be content. I know how to be brought low and I know how to abound. In any and every circumstance I have learned the secret of facing plenty and hunger, abundance and need. I can do all things through him who strengthens me. The second the lot of verses I want to look at is from 2 Peter 1, right from verses 3 right through to 11. His divine power has granted to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us to his own glory and excellence, by which he has granted to us his precious and very great promises, so that through them you may become partakers of his divine nature, having escaped from the corruption that is in the world because of sinful desire. For this very reason, make every effort to supplement your faith with virtue and virtue with knowledge and knowledge with self-control and self-control with steadfastness and steadfastness with godliness and godliness with brotherly affection and brotherly affection with love goes on for if these qualities are yours and increasing they keep you from being ineffective or unfruitful in the knowledge of our lord jesus christ for whoever lacks these qualities is so nearsighted that he is blind having forgotten that he was cleansed from his former sins therefore brothers be all the more diligent to confirm your calling and election. For if you practice these qualities, you will never fall. For in this way, they will be richly provided for you. An entrance into the eternal kingdom of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Firstly, the, the famous verse, the one we all love to quote, 
I can do all things through him who strengthens me. There's a great verse. There's a cu- another couple here of famous verses from Philippians in Paul. From Paul. The first one, Philippians 3.8. I count everything as lost because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ, my Lord. For his sake I've suffered the loss of all things and count them rubbish in order that I may gain Christ. And again, the famous one that we read at the beginning, that we, I can do all things through Christ. It's that kind of fridge magnet verse that we all love to quote. But Paul was speaking in the context here of being content of having much and having little. He knew what it was to suffer. He knew that all he needed was to know God, a roof over his head and his daily bread. We might struggle in this time if we cannot learn to do all things through Christ. And when we're not content, when things are taken away from us, this is, this is where, it can be an exam- where we can be an example to do things through Christ. This is where we can really let our lights shine on top of a hill for everyone to see. We are to live not in fear right now. We, we need to be sensible. We need to use our common sense. We need to obey the government guidelines, etc., etc. But we must not fear this thing. We are not to fear even death itself because we will get to be in the presence of God. That's courage, and that's the power that you see in the early church when you read Acts, when you read these letters from Paul. We should not be in fear of losing our houses, our jobs, because we know that we can be content in Christ. We know that God promised us, but he promised me that if I seek his kingdom first, then all these other things will be given to me. That doesn't mean I'll be filthy rich, but it means he'll give me all that I need in every moment. That's what it says in the Lord's Prayer. We ask for our daily bread. Not all our bread for the next 20 or 30 years or till we die, so we know that we'll be all right. Though Jesus says, don't worry about tomorrow, but we want to worry about tomorrow. We don't just want our daily bread. We want our bread and our water and our wine and our good food and our comfort and all these other things. But we won't find contentment in those things, but you will in him because he will be our portion now, today and forever. You need and we need to find contentment in him. My prayer is that if you already believe in Jesus, that through this time you will draw closer to him, hear from him and be more like him when we're on the other side of this. Let him speak to you and maybe this will help in our sanctification process. Also my prayer is that if you're watching this and you wouldn't call yourself a Christian, you will start to call on the God who knows you by name, the God who created you, and the God who sent his son to die for you. So we can be an example to the world around us, church, to be peacemakers, to be content, because the Lord is my shepherd. We can learn to rejoice in any circumstance. How? Because as Peter said, his divine power has granted to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us to his own glory and excellence. We don't have the resources in our own power, but through him, through Christ, we can share or we can partake in his divine nature, becoming more like him, sharing in his nature. We have great promises. If you are in Christ, you are loved. If you are in Christ, you will be saved from perishing. If you are in Christ, the best is yet to come when Jesus returns. Peter goes on to say, 
Make every effort to supplement your faith. Are you doing that at this time? Knowledge, self-control, steadfastness, godliness. That's what Peter talks about. Seek God above everything else in this time. And you will find rest. You will find peace. Search him. Read his book. Read scripture. Read the word of God. Let it get into your very being. Get to know him better through that. Study his word. Make time for him. If you do these things, Peter says, it will help you from being ineffective or unfruitful. God wants to empower and enable us for all that lies ahead. Whether it is with plenty or whether it is with little. He will sustain you if you let him. As you grow in these things with God, you can be certain of his character. We can have a, a sane view of our brain. We have a limited understanding. If you think of everything there is to know and understand in the world, we probably understand about 1%. You need to live comfortably with the conflict. Suffering will not end until Jesus comes back again. And have eternity in mind. It says at the end of these verses... From Peter that we have an entrance into an eternal kingdom of our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ. You can enter into an eternal kingdom. This life isn't the end. You will meet God when you die. He will ask you what you did with Jesus on this life. Jesus who died for you, will you accept him now? Will you put your trust in him? You can do that today. And we're going to pray at the end. And church, don't waste this time of coronavirus lockdown. Use it to go deeper with God. Use it to let your, his light shine brighter. Show the world that Jesus is the only answer for this hurting world. You can still speak to people. You can still speak, to, you're allowed to still speak to your neighbours, even if it's from a distance. You might have to speak up a bit, but that's okay. You can still speak to your neighbours. You can still speak, speak to friends. You can still share things online. You can still speak to your children about this God who loves them and died for them. You can still speak to your family who don't know Jesus. Church, you can use this opportunity to share the love of God, share that Jesus died for them. That Jesus died for them. Share it. Share that Jesus died for you so that you may live. So that you will not perish. So that you will have hope for this life and the next. Now, if you want to ask Jesus into your life to receive life and life in all its fullness that's what Jesus said he had to offer and receive that peace that I've been speaking about then you just need to pray these simple words after me I'm just going to pray them and you can pray them after me quietly or as loudly if you want in your own home Lord I am sorry that I've gone my own way that I turned my back on you. Forgive me for my sin. Thank you for dying for me on the cross. Now please come into my life and take first place and help me follow you by the help of your Holy Spirit. Now if you prayed that this morning, love to hear from you you can email me at ian at hopechurch number seven oaks dot org i'd love to chat with you further or contact us check out our details on the hope church website um or you, if you've got questions so what i talked about this morning i'd love to hear from you also just wanted to remind you don't forget church to encourage your kids to engage with the stuff that's being sent out um, by angie who heads up our kids work and if you've got youth that are in the church can I really urge you to 
engage them and get them involved in the Ignite stuff that still happens on a Sunday night, they really need that. I'm sure they're looking at lots of screens at the moment, but this is a great opportunity for them to engage in a screen time that will do their souls good. That will do them good. So I encourage you to encourage your teenagers, which I'm sure is a real joy and really easy to do. Now, just remind you as well, as we're coming to a close, we've got communion uh, at, at live at 11.15 on Sunday morning. So if you're watching this for the first time live, I will see you on the Zoom. We're gonna have communion together where we share bread and, and wine together, remembering what Jesus has done, the giver of life and peace in this time. Amen, and I'll see you again next week.